Shooting fashion can present some problems, as different lighting qualities are required for each piece of clothing. In classic fashion, Dean Collins maintains creative control with the confidence of knowing that each material will be properly lit, with only a slight adjustment to the versatile lighting setup. Doing an ad for a local dress shop uh, is a little bit different than a national ad for, let's say, possibly the dress manufacturer. Uh, lighting uh, the shop for manufacturer would be to show up the dress. really doesn't matter how good the people look. If you ever look at a lot of fashion in uh, major magazines, you're not going to see sometimes high quality light on the people's faces, more for the clothes. So often uh, it's not a real good portrait. But if you're shooting it for the, the dealer of the clothes, the ones that are selling the clothes to the public, their ads are a little bit more of a portrait style. The people are supposed to look wonderful in the clothes. They aren't supposed to have hard cutting light or a heightened part of the face. They're, they're really supposed to have this uh, uh, really elegant look about them. So when you shoot for a local ad for a, in this case, uh, a local high-end dress seller, they're going to ask for a, uh, a good look on the people to make them look slim and make them look gorgeous and wonderful and the dress just fits on them perfect. Uh, light qualities here have to not only complement the clothes, but they have to complement the people's structure and face. Uh, specularity, shine the skin must be down, but yet specularity must be high enough to show the surface qualities, in this case beads or satin material, silk material. So it really depends on the particular job you're shooting for. Is it for the manufacturer to show just the clothes or is it for the retailer to sell, uh, to sell the good look of the clothes on the people? Commissioned to paint a series of backgrounds for fine light, artist Mitch Quasno begins to create a classic background by first covering an existing canvas and frame with a single sheet of clear plastic. This guarantees that there will be no soak through of fresh paint. A fresh canvas of muslin is then added and secured to the wood frame with staples, making sure the muslin is pulled taut to remove any wrinkles in the fabric. Mitch then adds a base of white paint spreading it evenly across the entire surface of the muslin, which completes the first stage of work on the classic background. Mitch stands the frame on its side by attaching two A-frame supports. The many layers of paint are then applied in a skillful display of knowledge and speed, as Mitch Quasno nears completion of a versatile background for Collins and his studio. A background painted up of very neutral tones for a very universal look. Uh, the reason we use these tones is that depending on the clothes that we're going to photograph, color of the clothes, we can actually change the background color just by taking a strobe with secondary color gels and, and uh, casting them on the background can match the colors of the clothes. The uh, background in this case was muslin again. It was painted on muslin, uh, just regular water-based paints. And uh, Mitch painted it up on the stretcher frame. Uh, and uh, after a night of drying, we've then peeled it off and put it onto a uh, a roll that you can pick up from a um, fabric outlet. Uh, they, after they get done selling the, uh, not fabric outlet, I'm sorry, carpet outlet. After they get done selling the carpet, they got this big roll sitting around, they're happy to get rid of them, take them up, staple this background, this muslin onto it, roll it up, and then store it away. Whenever we need it, we'll unroll it and work we'll this background. This background will probably be good for, for years, many, many shots. Uh, one shot really paid for it because it was in the budget, but once we finish it up uh, with the shot, we're going to store it away, and this is a great background for both portraiture and fashion. With the painted background complete and dry, the frame is laid back down to remove the staples. It is then attached to a large background roller tube. Assistants Kevin Scott Schumacher and Dave Lovall roll the background onto the cardboard tube, which will make the background portable and easy to store. Supported by two light stands, the background is rolled out and positioned on the set to begin the shoot. On one side of a FOBA camera stand, Kevin assembles a Hasselblad 500ELX with a 150mm f4 CF lens and a Polaroid back. A series of medium format 120 backs are then loaded with Kodak EPN Ektachrome 100, a daylight film balanced for strobe. On the other end of the stand, Kevin assembles a Cinar P2 4x5 camera with a 300mm Schneider DB lens. A viewer hood and pro lens shade are added to complete the dual camera setup.
As the models arrive at the studio, makeup artist Lelia Hale begins to create the classic look that is needed for the luxurious gown supplied by the client. To begin the lighting setup, a light form P42 with two layers of translucent fabric is brought in as the main diffusion panel. A brawn color strobe head is then placed behind the panel to create the main light source. When lighting fabric uh, and people in, in the fabric, meaning a portrait of someone in a nice dress, you have to think of, uh, in this case, with a lighter clothes or in, in the darker clothes, you're going to have to deal with either specularity or with shadow. On the lighter clothes, you're going to deal with a little bit more with the shadow transfer between the diffuse highlight and the shadow. Uh, and on the uh, light, darker clothes, uh, in the case reds or, or dark blues, you're going to work with a little bit more specularity, especially when they're dealing with silk. Silk has a very high shine to it, but if you don't light it properly, it doesn't have that shine, so that, that luster quality is not there. So really when you're lighting uh, this fabric, you have to identify what you're trying to show. In this case, they wanted to show that this stuff was either beaded material or they wanted to show that it was made up of silk material and that it has slight pleats to it. So working with a main light source, large, but to be able to make it very small is, is, is the uh, most important part here. Uh, bringing a strobe behind this scrim, taking a small strobe and, and backing it up behind a large scrim, you can make a six foot by six foot bank of light, which creates a very soft edge transfer between the diffuse and the shadow, but it does get rid of specularity. When you bring your light source in closer and closer to the scrim, it illuminates a smaller area of the scrim, which then illuminates the subject, and specularity will build, and you'll see a little bit more shine in the silk fabrics and a little brighter specularity in the pearls. The reflector fill is going to be able to do nothing more than add detail within the shadows area and you, depending on what kind of fabric you're working with will depend on how close you bring that reflector to lower the ratio between the diffuse highlight and the shadow. A diagram of the proposed lighting setup reveals the relative placement of the main P42 panel and strobe to the subject and backdrop. Reflector fill will be provided by two P22 panels with white reflective fabric set opposite of the main light source. An umbrella light on a boom stand will provide separation and a third strobe placed close to the background will provide additional separation for the subject while also enhancing the background. As the umbrella separation strobe is rolled into place, we can see that a one-stop Roscolux ND gel has been added to control the output of the strobe. The third bronze color strobe head with an amber gel is also set on a boom stand and placed close to the painted background to produce a rapid fall off. This spill of warm light across the background will also provide additional separation for the subject. Several utility clips are used to pull the background taut, controlling any wrinkles that might show from the closely placed background strobe. Three Lightform P22 frames are then used to create the reflector that will provide fill for the subject. A diagram reveals the simple construction of three frames, each connected by double clips. The two front panels are covered with white reflective fabric, together forming a six and one half foot by seven foot non-directional reflective surface. This construction of three panels creates the maximum reflective area. Completing the setup, a P22 with opaque fabric is connected to the open side of the main panel, creating a gobo for the lens, and a P15 with black fabric is used to protect the lens from the umbrella separation light. Close, close, touch it up. Yeah, Collins right then directs his assistant to move the main strobe until the desired uh, light source back size back for the back first back dress back is achieved. Back Dean back Collins back talks back about back the use of scrims stop in fashion. Good. Scrims are, in this case, one of the most universal devices to light fabric because not knowing what the particular fabric is going to be the next one on the set. You know, you can be shooting one particular clothing, a very light clothing with no beading, 
and then all of a sudden the next person that drops on is going to have very dark clothing, silk material with beads all over. So you're going to, one, you're going to be working for shadow form, the other one you're going to be working for specular form. So a light box or a umbrella is not really that universal in that case because with a panel, one reason we're using a panel is that if we need a specularity, we bring the light source closer, we'll illuminate a smaller area of the, uh, the scrim. If, we want a, uh, if you want a, a softer specularity, you back it up. So you have much more control of your, your particular uh, subject and in your cloth fabric with, with scrims. These are, these are by light forms uh, that, that we have here where they collapse and travel, but in the studio, if you're not going to collapse and travel them, they can just easily be made out of uh, PVC, plastic pipe, they can be made out of wood, they can be made out of anything that'll stretch a material, or actually build a frame, a very lightweight frame. And the materials we're using in this case is a certain ripstop nylon produced by light form, but you can also use architectural vellum, you can use tracing paper, you can actually light through an old bed sheet and still have the same quality of light. It's not the, it's not the expense of the equipment, it's actually the concept behind the equipment that's working here. With Kevin holding a calumet exposure calculator, okay, then, Collins checks for Bellows' extension maybe, factor whatever, and finds no significant light loss. Using an infrared sensor to fire the strobes, Collins determines a reflective value well, twice as bright as the main light incident two, reading, producing a 36% background brightness. Finally, a loop is used to check critical focus on the 4x5 ground glass. Right super, super. Our model Leslie takes her place okay, as Collins like begins the shoot. Excellent, excellent. Good, 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 good. Uh, right An initial okay. Polaroid check print assured fine, Collins fine, of the fine, correct fine, subject fine, exposure fine, and background fine, brightness. Good, 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 now good, using good, Kodak 6122, good, good, Collins begins to capture good, the different good, classic good, poses good, that good, Leslie good, offers good, in the beautifully good, beaded good, gown. Good, Note the specularity on the fabric that Collins has achieved by correctly positioning the strobe relative to the scrim. Also note the even highlight on the hair and shoulders of Leslie from the overhead umbrella. We asked Dean why he chose the umbrella for separation. Normally we would uh, use flat system on everything because of the control of light quality, specular, shadow edge. But in this, this case for separation quality, we'll call it hair light, but it's really not a hair light. Yeah, it's given detail of the hair, but it's really more separation for the clothes, the fabric, shoulder line, breaking it from the background. We wanted a large source of illumination because we didn't want to wash out, like a smaller source separating from behind normal will lose a lot of color, lose a lot of detail. A larger source of illumination produces less specularity on, on surface, hair, shoulders. So we wanted a large source up there, but we wanted to be able to do it with, with a boom. So an umbrella was an obvious choice. It was somewhat directional, but it gave separation not only in the hair, shoulders, down the side of the dress, it, grew, it broke an entire subject or two subjects away from the background. Uh, not only did we use the separation light for separating qualities, but also we added colors to the background by taking color gels and dropping them on uh, to a strobe, bringing them in either close to the background or backing them up will create the gradation. Uh, some shots we want to lose color detail in it and then burst across to force attention, especially with transfers of tones on the dress. Sometimes we want to max, maximize that motion of the dress by adding color transfers across the background. And we can take ambers, reds, blue, any gels we want to match the clothes. Uh, the best thing to match it, though, make sure that the first Polaroid is, is correct, is when you take an incident reading, knowing what you're shooting at, you take a reflective reading off the background, uh, by comparing the two, knowing what an incident, knowing what you're setting your camera at, knowing what the background reads, uh, reflective, you're pretty well going to know what tones are going to show up before you pull that first Polaroid, which, which is the accuracy of the whole shot. You don't have a lot of time when this person's on the set. You have peak times. You don't want to be standing there looking for Polaroids for hours trying to figure out the best light quality. Uh, you want your first or second Polaroid to be bingo right on the money. I'm going to shoot again. I'm going to shoot two chromes, begin with good, process one out as a test, and go from there. Push it a half, so we'll bring it up. I guess. We can always bracket. Ah. Excellent. That's exactly what I want. Here we go now. Here we go. As here Collins go. wraps up the first now, series of full length go. shots, okay, like we will take a moment like to look it. at the good, evolution good, of these good, images. Excellent, excellent. Hold it, hold it right there. In our first check print, Leslie is illuminated by the main diffusion panel only. The diffused highlight is correctly exposed, and there is good detail and form throughout. With the addition of the reflector panel, Soft, non-directional fill from the main light adds detail to the shadow area, while also identifying the subtle details and qualities of the fabric. Good separation from the background is achieved as the umbrella separation strobe is brought in, while light also spills past and strikes the reflector panel, bringing additional detail to the shadow area. A gobo is added to protect the lens from the umbrella separation strobe. The third strobe head is aimed directly at the painted background, creating a gradation of light across the photograph while providing even more separation for the subject. To add a touch of warmth to the shot, 
Collins uses a Roscoe Lux Amber Gel on the third strobe, which finishes the image and completes the evolution of this classic fashion shot of Leslie. Returning to the shoot in progress, Kevin adds a black paper vignette to the front of the Pro Lens shade as Dean prepares to shoot a series of three-quarter length images with Leslie. Incident readings are continually taken to ensure proper exposures. Bring the vase off that way just a little bit. With the addition of a pillar as a set prop, no, 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 Collins begins we'll working with Leslie little, little, to capture a new series yeah, that, of poses that, that, for the three-quarter length composition. Okay, good, good, good. Bring the vase slowly back into me, into me, into me, into me, into me, into me, into me. Each 4x5 film holder is marked with information corresponding to a log sheet of exposure and development times. Okay. As Collins okay, continues good, taking good, 4x5 good, good, exposures, good, good, we can good, see the good, effect of the vignette on the lens shade. Note the soft right transfer to black right at the base of the picture, right there, breaking up the hard lines little of little the pillar at the, the edge of the photograph. Bring it in like that, bring it in just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring the face out just a little bit, yeah, 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 good, 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 super, okay. Same just like that, same just like that, hold it right there. Just, uh, kind of a serious, bring the face off, look at the light source, at the source of illumination, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, good. To round good, off good, the shooting good, of this good, particular okay. gown, uh, Colin switches to a motorized medium format camera. Good, good, good. With right 120 there, magazines right there, right already there, right loaded, Dean utilizes the Hasselblad 500 ELX with a 150 mm lens good, good, good. to capture the changing place. expressions of the model. Okay. Good, straight into me again, straight into me like that again. Okay, drop the one hip, drop the one hip out, hip. There you go, good, 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 right there. One more time right there, super, super. Now bring your face, stretch it across, head up, good. As Leslie makes okay, a quick great, wardrobe great, right change, there, okay. an assistant adds a second background strobe with a colored gel. With the addition of another gelled strobe aimed at the background, Collins can affect both the appearance and the mood of the photograph by simply changing the placement of the strobes or the color combination of gels. When you're shooting clothes of this quality, you want to have the optimum image area you can. That's why we're using a 4x5, but after you get the shot done, everybody's mo moved in, you, you take a look at the pose, it looks great, you can drop the 4x5 sheet of film, the CNR drops that aperture down, sets for you, everything's ready to go right there, so you can shoot people quickly with a 4x5, but, but a lot of motion, a lot of angles, be able to crank off five, six shots in a matter of seconds, you're not going to do it with a 4x5, at least not with my 4x5. So the ability to have a Hasselblad uh, ELX motor drive on the other end of the, the, the FOBA, you can just quickly roll it around, it's all set up, aim at the situation, put on that magazine and fire away, and uh, just use the same exact settings you've used from your uh, 4x5 and you just start cranking it off. Uh, be able to change the color of the background gels uh, to match the clothes, you get that peak energy going, and uh, it just becomes a very quick motion and, and you can get a lot out of a very short period of time because that model is only going to be good for maybe two, three, four minutes in that motion aspect. So you got your 4x5 for your classical looks, that contrived look, but for a lot of motion you got your, your motor drive and it's all on one studio stand so it's just, it's instantaneous. You can just, you don't lose one beat. Good, 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 Working good, now good. with model Denise Perkins, low, Collins low, begins right by good, shooting good, with the handheld medium excellent, format excellent, camera excellent, in the super, original super, lighting super, setup. Super, excellent, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Good, 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 good. Shoulders a little bit away, shoulders a little bit away. There you go. Okay, Kendra, okay, right there, excellent, excellent. Okay, good, 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 good. Do that again, do that again, do that again, good. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Ow! Okay, drop it down right there. Hard, 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 hard. Okay, that's correct. Kevin reloads several 120 backs with film and continues his notation on the log sheet. Collins quickly moves back to the CNR 4x5 for a series of dramatic full length shots of Denise as the gown is brought to life in classic fashion. Great, okay. Just like that. Excellent, excellent. Kick it in just a little bit more. Good, okay, good. Eyes right there, bringing face back in the camera, just a little bit into it, right there. Good, 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 yeah. 
Oh, cool. That's good too. That's good. That's good. Yeah, depending on the particular clothes will depend on what person we put in it. Lighter clothes went with uh, needing shadow form, went with a lighter model. And the darker clothes, with the red clothes, needed some more specularity as the black model did. So we chose the right model for the light clothes. And, and uh, with the hair style of, of Leslie being very classical, showed that form and showed that feeling of that dress. But uh, with your little bit more of a bizarre look, we'll say the red outfit with more of the gown outfit, the, the hair style and the black skin called for that. The models give you the look that, that you're asking for. They're, they're professionals. They know what they're doing. They can look at the clothes. They can look at their makeup and pretty well know the mood that you're going to be asking for. Our job is to create the exact technological base to make sure that all comes out on film. And, and it's, it's a co-op effort, background painting, the model. I mean, it's a lot of people going together to get the look and the mood that you're, you're going for. Before shooting resumes, our makeup artist Lelia does a quick touch-up on Denise. Collins again quickly switches formats on the Phoba stand, looking to capture a few more images while his model is still full of energy. Good, turn the V out right there. Good, 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 good. Great, great, great. Top of the head, just a little bit away from me. Top of the head, just a little bit away from me. Right there, excellent, excellent, excellent. Great, great, great. A little taller than the neck. Give me more neck. Drop the shoulders, front shoulders. Okay. No, 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 Dean no, Collins adds a there. final comment. Right there. Good, good, good. One thing about the particular clothes, if you know, this is some of the finest fabrics in the world, some of the finest dresses, all handmade. In fact, some of them are limited editions. Uh, the, the dollar factor in these clothes are extremely high, so you wanted the best possible look. The people that are going to be viewing these are used to high quality. So the whole support concept, I mean, it wasn't just me as a photographer, it was the person that, it was Mitch painting this background, I mean, this incredible art quality that this man has to put this on canvas. The models themselves being the professional quality that they are, knowing what to do, knowing you don't have to tell them what to do, they know what to do. Uh, and then the light quality is being exact for the right clothes. You're talking about the uh, collective effort of all high professional personnel here to come out with the very best look for the, the people that know what the very best look like. The concept behind this annual report photograph of two airline executives is power. Preparation for an image of this nature is the key, as the president and chairman of the board live in different cities and would not be together again before the annual report publishing deadlines. An equipment failure on this shoot would prove disastrous. The objective of this shot was to produce a photograph of two men who was the president and chairman of the board together within the environment of uh, the environment that they control, which is the rotunda of a uh, terminal of a, of a fairly large uh, airlines, a PSA, which is a local commuter, and which covers a lot of the United States. They wanted it to impact the aspect of uh, aggressive, powerful, leading edge, uh, high tech. Uh, so the, the whole concept of bringing the proper colors, illuminating a large area, creating a very unusual uh, perspective of an architectural structure with those two identified in the center structure, all leading lines to them, is, was the basic concept for this annual report shot. After arriving at San Francisco International Airport, the crew transfers the equipment to the bottom of the escalator by cart and then to the top of the rotunda area to start the shoot. This is a Grand Central Station with lighting or something? Is that Looks like we're going to be at about this angle right here. They don't want any, any of that. that Collins right and his assistant, Kevin it's Scott Schumacher, begin by going over the art director's layout to plan the lighting setup. And his shoulder straight forward, casting the shadows forward. So it's on the second floor down. Do we, we have an 11 foot stand? Bring it up and fire directly, right, right, directly in his back, fire it forward, and then have that light coming right at us. So you cast these shadows this way. So we're gonna, the only thing is with the main light coming in, you're gonna wash out this whole area here to kill that shadow off, so we're gonna have to darken it in the front area. So we'll kick through. And, uh, the main light right there, one strobe firing through a P42 right here, 
give us a soft enough quality wrap around. We got a lot of specularity to deal with too. This particular shot was kind of conceived by a, a cooperative effort myself and the uh, the in-house people at at PSA Airlines. Uh, they gave us about two, two and a half days to be able to scout all of their airports to find a good angle. Uh, Kevin Scott and I flew up into this area, saw this new rotunda they just built, did a series of shots with a wide angle, trying to pick up these round symmetrical angles and. Uh, Fort, uh, that day was a sunny day, uh, a lot of backlighting coming through there, and we used sunlight to create this backlight effect and a little bit of strobe field to show that if we work with a wide angle, they can get some of these converging lines and shadows to, to the camera angle to create this feeling. Uh, after we shot a whole series of angles, outdoors, indoors, we went back and we presented these shots uh, to, the, to the people in-house, sat down, kind of a cooperative and came up with the angle. They drew up the renderings. About two weeks later, we uh, were up here shooting the final job and uh, putting it together. Collins sets up his tripod for the low angle photograph as the crew unpacks the many cases of equipment. Kevin. Each piece of equipment was carefully packed in hard cases Kevin, for the flight from San Diego. A Cinar P2 4x5 camera is mounted on the tripod with a 90 millimeter Schneider DB lens. Utilizing a wide-angle lens and a bag bellows, the unnecessary extension rail is removed by Collins. A viewer hood is attached, and a cable release is added to complete the P2 system. With the camera position established, Kevin begins the lighting setup by unfolding a light form P42 frame and attaching it to two stands with EC1 clamps. Two layers of translucent ripstop nylon are added to create the main diffusion panel. Dean Collins talks about the use of a scrim to light the executives. The main light was a P42 uh, panel. Strobe was fired, backed up, fired to evenly illuminate it to create the softest light we could, but it was backed up so there's a lot of specularity. Two things we had to be careful of. Specularity, a lot of the shine off the, uh, the polished uh, stainless steel on the escalators, we had to do a lot of go-boing to protect that. And also we had to stop a lot of the foreground from being washed out. So when we finally did backlight it, it uh, had shadow form because they wanted to have those shadows, those warm shadows coming at us. So we had to really calm down the brightness on the foreground from the main lights of the background shadows would, uh, that background stroke would cast shadows. Uh, the body separation was not going to be done from the main light because they had dark suits on and it was a kind of a matte surface. So the secondary strobe behind casting through was going to separate out the body from the background. The main panel is moved into position for the photograph as Collins makes sure the support stands are clearly outside of his camera angle of view. With the panel in place, Kevin pulls the necessary equipment to set up the main strobe. Working around the busy airport rotunda, Kevin places a bronze color strobe head on a light stand and then removes the protective cover to replace it with a parabolic reflector. The strobe cables are connected to a Pulso 4 power pack and a sync cord is then stretched from the power pack to the 4x5 camera as Collins prepares for his first test shot. All extension cords are duct taped down for safety in the heavily trafficked areas. Collins directs an assistant to adjust the distance of the strobe head to the diffusion fabric until the desired light source size is achieved. Bring a little bit more this side. Yeah, that's good right there. Good, good. With the stand-ins now in place, Kevin takes an incident reading with a Minolta 4 meter to determine the proper exposure and ensure even illumination in the subject area. Collins sets the 4x5 and makes the first test exposure of the stand-ins at a 60th at F-16. A look at the first check print reveals that Collins has not only achieved the proper exposure with his main light, but has also produced a shot that is nearly identical to the art director's layout. 
Dean explains his use of stand-ins on the shoot. Uh, Stand-ins in this case were used because these are presidents and chairman of the boards of a company. They don't have more than maybe five minutes to give you. In fact, this entire shot was based around their travel schedule. They were going to be in this town at a board meeting nearby here, and that's just by them passing through. They stopped five minutes, got their picture taken, and off they went. So our job was to get up here an hour and a half, three, four hours ahead of time, get everything set into place. The stand-ins had to have the same density clothes. That's done by researching what this, these men are going to wear this day. Uh, make sure the clothes are the same, make sure the height is the same, the structure is the same, and by placing them in there, um, guaranteed that all the lighting was done to where when these people showed up, bing, they sat there, bam, 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 six, seven, eight shots, and they're on their way, and they are happy as clams. So investigation of the uh, proper standards are important. Taking a closer look at our first check print, we can see the need to remove the spill of light on the ceiling and the plastic handrail signs on each side of the escalator. Collins has also determined that the carpet area in front of the subjects should be much darker to later achieve the strong backlight and shadow that the art director has asked for. The main panel is moved slightly back toward the strobe to contain the spill as Kevin removes the two escalator plates. A P15 panel with opaque fabric is secured to the back side of the main panel with double clips to further contain any spill from the strobe. Mark then attaches a second P15 to act as a gobo for the camera lens. While viewing through the 4x5, Collins okay, guides his assistants to setting a P22 panel with opaque okay, fabric just outside the camera angle of view. This panel will gobo light from the floor in front of the subjects. The panel is then secured to a light stand with a light form EC1 clamp. A diagram shows the effect of the foreground gobo as it blocks light from illuminating the floor. An overall view reveals the setup for the second test shot. Having made the necessary adjustments, we can see in the second check print that the ceiling is now uniform in illumination. The escalator plates have been removed and the floor in front of the stand-ins is now darker, while the subject area remains correctly exposed. Since we were able to calm down the foreground the, uh, to where it was dark and we could cast shadows in front of it, in this case it was this amber glow that was casting forward showing their silhouettes up, which was, gave us a dark leading line back into the primary subject. Uh, which was really the, the chairman of the board. Uh, the president was second in command, so we wanted the power to come directly from behind the chairman of the board. So the strobe was, was placed behind him, amber gel about shoulder heights firing right at us. The biggest problem is figuring out the brightness of uh, this glow. Uh, that can't be done with an instant meter reading because it tells you how, much, how, how bright it was going to be on the opposite side of his body. So taking a reflective meter, a five degree spot on an Alta 3, and taking a reflective reading right off of the carpet at the sa exact same angle the lens was going to see it would tell us its relative value relative to 18%. Whatever the brightness was, we wanted it to be about a four to one amber, which is a very light amber. Uh, we're shooting at F11, so we wanted that carpet to read a reflective uh, F22 which says if you shot at 22, it'd be 18%, but if you shot at uh, F11, it'd be four times brighter than 18%. A second full so power pack is set up by Mark on the lower landing of the steps, as Kevin adds a bronze color strobe head to a light stand to provide the directional separation that the layout asks for. A Roscoe Lux Amber Gel is added to warm up the separation light. Move it off to one side where I can see where it is. We get it right in between them, because I can't see them right Collins now. Collins then directs the positioning right of the strobe to produce the proper origin of light source so while hiding it behind, it behind the subject. Keep going. Okay, good. Bring it. Uh, okay. Yeah, right there. Bring it on up now. About three, four, five, four feet. Eight, five, pump it a on reflective up reading is taken from the foreground carpet with a five degree spot attachment okay. on the meter, giving Collins an exposure value relative to his four incident one, reading. Okay, that'll give me a three to one right there, Amber. That'll lose a lot of a texture detail, get a lot of power, give a nice separation on the lines. So let's take a, take a pull over and see where we're at. A camera point of view right shows there, our stand-ins yeah, at the time of the third test exposure. The effects of isolating the Amber separation strobe are shown in the third check print. 
Note that Collins has set the strobe to originate from the position of the chairman of the board. Providing separation for both men, the amber backlight also produces strong shadow patterns in the foreground and evenly illuminates the foreground ceiling with a warm glow. The reflective reading of the amber carpet read F22 and a half, which is three times brighter than the subject incident reading of F16. Oh, we, we brought in as much strobe power as we could into this shot simply to control the entire environment. Uh, we were illuminating large areas, it was almost an architectural shot along with a portrait. So taking the, uh, taking the initiative of working with our own color gels, ambering the backlight, and then illuminating the rotunda area with the strobe firing up to get that architectural form, we forced attention and controlled it. The only ambient we had to deal with was really a little bit of the mercury uh, vapors, the, the vapor lights, which were actually taking, the reason they're bright is because we're taking a picture of them while they're lit. Uh, they weren't really going to affect any tones. They weren't, we weren't going to be color contaminated. This, their own color is going to be contaminated within the, the sockets. And then the shutter speed uh, on the camera was going to control the brightness of the sky, how rich and blue. Do we want a real dark blue caused by a fast shutter speed? Or do we want a, a kind of a pale blue controlled by a slow shutter speed? One thing you have to be careful, though, is we were using a lot of watt seconds. A lot of watt seconds means long flash duration. Long flash duration means you can't be too fast with your shutter because you cut out the true peak of your entire color band of your strobe. The final step in the evolution of this photograph is the addition of a third strobe head to light the ceiling of the rotunda. The strobe with reflector is pointed straight up for maximum coverage. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'm going to say I'm take a reflective reading off of that wall here to get it up to about a six to one. So we still have unable to take an incident morning. reading of the ceiling. Collins takes reflective readings with a five degree spot attachment to check for even exposure values across the high ceiling. Sixteen six. Do it again. An overall view of the setup allows us to see the placement of each of the three strobes and the relationship to the subjects and the camera as Collins makes the exposure for the fourth and final test shot. Okay, guys. Okay, okay. Just raise that, raise that foot up just a little bit. Raise the foot right there, right there. Step with a little bit of a smile. Come on. Good, good. good. Our final check print isolates the effect of the third strobe on the ceiling giving form and definition to the area, while also providing additional separation to the dark suits of our subjects. The reflective reading of F32 and a half on the ceiling is six times brighter than the subject incident reading of F16. A cross-section diagram provides a different view of the rotunda as the main diffusion panel, the directional separation strobe, and the rotunda background strobe are added to complete the setup at the time of final exposure. My only disappointment with this shot is we didn't get an interaction between myself and the president on film. Uh, there is a way you work with these people, especially at their position and their para aspect, but the, uh, the client themselves didn't want any video cameras around to record the situation. They wanted the people in and out and away we go. They didn't want any mistakes, which is one reason we packed so much extra gear, making sure that we had extra support, uh, power pack, strobe heads, even a secondary camera uh, on, on premise that if there was any theory, we got the shot. One thing you have to realize that this stuff is that these people are in printing dates. I mean, they have a scheduled printing time for these annual reports to come off press. And if we miss the shot here today because we didn't have uh, a strobe head or exactly what they needed, and they knew exactly what they needed, they gave us an exact rendering with all details in it, so there wasn't any second guessing the shot. We knew exactly what we had to do. But if we would have fouled the shot up today because we didn't have the gear on hand uh, because of strobe failure or a camera failure, uh, it may be months before these people have opportunity to get in front of these cameras again because of their busy schedule. And you can't have that. Uh, this is a guaranteed situation for them. You have to pull it off on the right, right schedule. The shoot was a great success as Collins met all of the necessary deadlines to create a powerful corporate image for PSA's annual report. An understanding of proper metering techniques, along with detailed scouting and preparation, can turn potentially complex location shoots into an enjoyable climb up the corporate ladder. Taking a photograph at the beach can be lots of fun, especially when the beach is in your studio. This image, entitled Hard Bodies, is an exercise in creating the soft, ambient light qualities of a natural outdoor setting 
with the complete control of a studio sunset. The objective of the situation was to give a format for a publication cover, a magazine cover, Go on the Racks. Uh, it was a summer theme, bathing suits, a uh, very beachy look uh, on the beach, uh, a little bit of a comedy relief, some serious, some comedy relief. So uh, we had to come up with quite a few shots for the art director to choose his feeling, to, to please uh, him that he had something to choose from. He wasn't locked down to one look. Uh, there were some technical problems. Uh, we had a long exposure to deal with because they wanted in the background to have a very pastel, surrealistic look. So we had to have some motion there. So we had to deal with hot lights. We had lim limited depth of field to work with. We had expressions to deal with, people holding their poses. But uh, one of the things to overcome in this situation is, is you're locked into a certain format. Uh, you have to leave an area for the, the, the actual mask head and then the gutter area to read. So you're locked into a certain configuration and sometimes when you shoot it, it looks very awkward because you're really shooting for something to be done with it later on. So a lot of things had to be kept in, in motion. A lot of people on the set, a lot of things dropped into certain times, uh, frames. Uh, again, everything peaks at the moment or you have character expression, motion, people doing lots of things. So uh, all together was a, was a great shoot. We came up with exactly what we uh, wanted and the, the client had a ton of things to draw from. The shoot begins with Dean's assistant, Kevin, attaching two by four A-frames to each side of the large painted backdrop in the studio cove. Excess 2x4 is then cut off of the back side so that the background can be placed as close as possible to the cove wall. Note the caster wheels on the bottom of the background frame. While the set is being built, our makeup artist Lelia applies flat makeup to the face and body of Leslie for a clean tan look in the harsh sunlight that Collins will produce. The crew continues their work by placing two 4 foot by 8 foot sheets of plywood on top of a series of empty paint cans and a ladder, creating an even, movable platform for the beach. When a shot like this is, we decided to do a shot like this, uh, we needed about, a, about four weeks lead time, A, to hire the artist, B, to set up the time for our psych, our area to be freed up for about a day and a half. Uh, it takes them about a day and a half to paint it, dry it out, and we want to use it quickly because you don't want this thing laying around. It eats up too much space, it gets in everybody's way, and the moment it, the shot's done, it's packed up and put away. So uh, it has to be very, very well choreographed in timing situation because of the size of the shot, the props, getting the models in, and then finding the right models, too, for the character study. Someone that can handle expression and, and uh, models that have the right look for what they're going for. A lot, a lot of casting, a lot of preparation time. Kevin uses a staple gun to firmly attach a strip of foam core, securing the two sheets of plywood together for the duration of the shoot. A large roll of clear plastic is then stretched over the plywood for easy sand control and eventually simple removal. Collins begins setting up his Cenar P2 4x5 camera system. Conventional bellows are added for use with a telephoto lens. The 300mm Schneider DB lens is added, and the cables for the self-cocking system complete the setup. With the camera mounted upside down, Collins lowers the camera on the Phoba stand to a low enough angle that when viewing through the camera, the sand will hide the bottom of the painted background. With Leslie on set, Collins eyes the shot and checks his composition from the exact camera angle of view. Pleased with the look, he will instruct his crew to continue setting up the beach. Silica sand is added to the platform, and then Collins and his crew have a little fun spreading out the sand evenly. As good as low as we can possibly get it, I want to get a light bouncing off here just a second. I don't want Dean then decides that a 500 watt tungsten photo flood will be aimed at the background to produce the effect of the setting sun. 
Uh, I think a lull coming in. Coming in here. If that doesn't work, maybe we'll just work with this guy bursting in here to create. Collins talks about that. creating a beach in the studio. When asked uh, to produce a beach look, we decided uh, not only to give a beach look, but a sunset on the beach, which meaning we had to have the combination of sun setting, which is a bright gradation from one corner to another, uh, the proper tones in the background warms to the very bluish skies, and then the proper reflective fill along with the hard light. Uh, combinations of that to make it look realistic. Uh, studying a beach, watching somebody on the beach will show you that, and then you come up with artificial uh, qualities in your studios to make it look natural. Uh, then, probably the biggest challenge was to produce the light qualities where it would fit not only a full-length figure and properly light them for both, you might say, quality of uh, people illumination, but also showing fabrics of cloth, types of material used. But we also had to do it for a smaller shot, more of a close-up of the individual sitting. So it was the area illumination and uh, kind of the artificial ambience to make it look like a natural feeling that we had to come up with in this shot. A Roscoe Lux Amber Gel is clipped to the parabolic to warm up the background burst. And a Smith Victor 650 watt quartz light is set on a single stand to create the hard sunlight effect. A Smith Victor Gel frame holds another Amber Gel to warm up the hard light aimed at the model. Collins uses one of his assistants as a stand in to check the sunlight quality that the quartz light produces. A light form P42 panel with two layers of translucent material is clamped to two single stands to act as the main diffusion panel. A series of light form P22 panels is then set up and connected with double clips to form a lightweight T-shaped reflector. The two main P22 frames are covered with reflective fabric that creates a large non-directional reflector fill that is sturdy and can be easily readjusted for more or less fill light. A 1000 watt Lowell total light is then set up behind the main panel to create the main source of illumination. Okay, bring your face towards me just a little bit. Okay, yeah, with Leslie back in place and the beach set complete, Collins directs Leslie as to exactly how far she can turn her face before the hard light strikes her nose. Keep going, keep going up, right there. That's about as far as we can go until your nose gets Hot lights are used for this photograph to enable Collins to move the painted background during timed exposures. Without background movement, the texture of the painted background might be seen in the final image. While Dean checks the look of his first setup, we can see that the extra clips have been added to the back of Leslie's suit to pull any wrinkles out of the already tight bathing suit. Okay, bring your face back in. I mean, look at, the, look at the light coming across her chest there from that sun. Which can, bring the hand up there again. Bring the hand up there again. Okay, stuff like that. All that kind of stuff is kind of fun. Shoulders onto me. Shoulders onto me. Just Yeah, right there. That's a real good line on you, too. Kevin then takes an incident meter reading to determine the relative exposure ratios between the main light, separation light, and the fill light. That's good. Okay. The initial incident meter reading of the main light reads f11.4 at one second. This reading establishes a hypothetical 18 percent value in the subject area, a value which we will refer to as one. An incident reading of the separation light reads f16.4 at one second, which is twice the brightness of the main light or a two to one value. And the incident reading of the fill light reads f8.4 at one second, which is only one half the brightness of the main light or a one to two value. Collins dials in an aperture of 11.4 and sets the shutter speed to one second, exposing for the main light on this first Polaroid check print. With our model Leslie sitting in the chair, Dean feels confident that she will be able to hold a pose for the duration of the one second exposure. Okay. Real, real tall, babe. Bring your face a little bit this way. Uh, stop right there. Great, great. Uh, uh, keep it a little bit more. Don't let the nose catch it. Don't get to let the nose catch it. Yeah, right there. Drop it down. Right there. That's good. Right there. Hold right there. Hold right there. Hold right there. Kevin adds a pro lens shade in front of the lens to protect it from any spill from the nearby main light.
The first check print is a success. You know, the only frightening part about this is the... Collins is pleased with the light qualities on Leslie, yeah. but the format of the photograph yeah. is not to his liking. Isn't that a kid? The image will be recorded on film, and Dean will then yeah, move on to the cover format. Collins explains the lighting okay. setup in detail. Uh -huh. The quality of illumination was caused by three sources of illumination. Uh, two that had to be very ambient, non-directional, uh, and one that was very directional. It had to look like the beach was causing all of the light, that the, that the directional sunlight, which is nothing more than a parabolic aimed at a background, that creates the background illumination, and then a secondary light, which was hitting the subject with an amber gel, and it created that very side light effect from the sun. Uh, the other lighting had to create, look like it was bouncing off, light from the sun, bouncing off of the sand, uh, limestone walls, whatever is at a beach, filling in and giving detail to the, both the bathing suit and the people's faces. The overall set illumination on this large, in this case it's uh, what, a nine foot background was caused by a large, the large box, uh, lights are bouncing around inside of those creating that large even illumination to create that again non-directional look, which came up with a very realistic shot controlled in the, um, in the studio. People ask, why didn't you just go in the shoot on the beach? I don't know if you ever tried to shoot on the beach, but it's, it's a basic crowd control first and secondly, then the shot. So that's one reason you come into the studio is to do these shots. Turn your body that way, away, away, real tall now. Uh, now, turn your, now turn your shoulders back that way. That's it, drop the head down. We'll play with it. Pull the seat a little bit tighter around you. Okay, that's good. Give me a little bit of it right there, hippie. Okay, turn the face off that way. That's good, okay, good. Exactly, right there. Now, see how, look how natural that looks like that. With okay, Leslie got, now standing on set, Collins has the nice incident room. reading checked to ensure proper okay, exposure in the now vertical okay, format. Okay, here we the go. shutter we're speed has been changed to one quarter down, second ready? to help Leslie hold her pose during the timed exposure. Good. Collins is pleased with the format and composition, and he decides to shoot another check print, this time moving the painted background during the exposure while also adding light to the background and subject from the overhead bounce box. Ready? Okay, uh, babe, more of a body movement, more of a body movement. Right, exactly, exactly. Turn it super. Turn your face a little bit away from me. Hold it right there. Okay, go, guys. Yeah, that's a whole different story. Which one, which one did you like the lighter one or the darker one? Did you like with two one? successful test prints, Collins works with Leslie on the different poses and attitudes that a beach scene can offer. Okay, and then, and then stretch and turn yourself around, which will thin down your waist anyway. Um, I think these whole things are kind of fun. A prop is added to the set as Collins and his crew begin to have some fun with a day at the beach. That's good. Hey, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Good? That's good. That's a good liner, Nick. Can you get a semi close pin some of that leg in? Okay, now bring the hands up on the hip just a little bit. Yeah, right there. With the setup now complete, yeah, Collins works with Leslie for a final Polaroid that captures a look that will fit the summertime okay, here mood. Go, here we 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 go. Here, no moves, no moves, okay? Okay, you guys, hit it. Okay. She can hold that. Yeah, she can hold Oh, the pineapple adds a lot. Look at that. <laughs> Is that the shot? I think we got it. In a look at the evolution of the photograph, our first check print reveals the effects of the main light, providing even illumination on the subject with the soft ambient light qualities caused by the large source of illumination and the non-directional reflector fill. Note the dark background without a setting sun. The addition of the large overhead bounce box produces the first hint of separation on the subject, while illuminating the background and beach with the same qualities of the open sky. The hard directional amber sunlight creates a realistic outdoor effect and also slightly raises the reflector fill from the light passing the subject and striking the reflector. And the amber photo flood is placed close to the background for a rapid fall off, creating the setting sun and producing a highlight on the model's leg that adds to the natural environment. To add to the fun on a beach, a second model is brought in on the set as Collins checks his critical focus with the use of a small flashlight okay, as a fine. focal That's good. point. That's good. By adding the model and the pineapple as props, Collins completes the design of his image, leaving ample space for copy in his composition. Finally, the textures of the painted background are removed by moving the background during the timed exposure. 
bit, show us a little bit of okay, now bring your face out. Bring a your view face from out. behind okay, the 4x5 okay, ground glass back, reveals uh, the uh, image right that there. Collins works with. Okay, Capturing the atmosphere of the beach, he begins to expose several sheets of Kodak 6118 4x5 sheet film balanced for tungsten light. Collins explains why he used 4x5 for this particular job. A 4x5 was used in this situation, uh, even though we're dealing with people and it's a little bit cumbersome to work with people, is we needed a, a, a transparency of the, the least amount of expansion to get to the cover of the magazine. If well, I shot on 120, uh, the expansion of that shot would have been too much for the simple reason we had to do a long exposure. It was hot lights, uh, it was a quarter of a second exposure, almost wide open, uh, to get this texture of a background to become very surrealistic, well actually make it look very natural, to have that gradation tones. With a strobe, it would have frozen everything so sharp you would have picked up the texture of this painted background, so we had to use a long exposure. Uh, fortunately, in the situation with CNR is they have a system that when you drop the film in, um, it closes it all down and ready to shoot, so it's very fast to work with people. Other 4x5s, you got to drop it in, readjust the camera, it's very slow, but with CNR, you can look through, check it out. The moment you drop the film in there, it shuts the aperture and shuts the shutter, and boom, you fire it off. So it's probably the best view camera dealing with photographing people in a large format. Here we go. Here we go. Real tall, real tall. Drop the head a little bit down. Drop the head. Oh, okay, good. Hold it, hold it. Okay, guys, get in. As the shoot progresses, Collins plays with different ideas and an assortment of poses, working with the crew and models to produce as many different looks as possible. Okay, shoulders a little bit, start staring at me, onto me, onto me, onto me, onto me, come on, your shoulders at me, yeah, yeah, that's good, eyes right here, me, eyes right here, freeze it, move it guys, move it guys, freeze it, excellent, that's excellent. Okay, just like that, okay, just a little bit of a smile, hold it, soften, babe, soften the neck just a little bit, here we go, freeze it, hit it guys, good. Okay, same thing. Kick it out a little harder, babe. Give me a little bit more. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Turn the face off just a little bit. Uh, yeah, bring your face into me just a little bit. Yeah, hold it right there. Okay, hold it. Breeze. Get it, guys. Straight your face, straight up forward like that. Bring the book up to where I can see it, to where we can read it. Okay, because it all spits. Okay, and then just kind of like, just kind of give me a sound like one of these. Give me like, just with your eyes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's great. Okay, right there. Uh, good. Just like that. Dean Just Collins adds some smile. closing okay, comments okay, about yeah, creating yeah, summertime yeah. images in the Excellent. studio. With the lighting situation, the way it's set up, there's a tremendous even illumination from one side to the other. Even though we're dealing with hard light, we were dealing with an overall bath of, uh, of uh, soft ambient light to create that natural feeling. So a lot of things could come out of it, and that's what did. A lot of different things came out of it. A lot of expressions, a lot of different multiple poses, uh, a lot of, we'll say, collective effort in this case. Even though it was an individual's effort to create it, it was still a collective kind of philosophy that people said, well, let's try this and let's try that. So the flexibility, when you, when you come up with a strong technical foundation and you're prepared, uh, that's when it all starts to happen. You can say, well, let's try this and say, no problem, we can do that. You know? And that's when it gets to be fun. And that's what I think commercial illustration really offers uh, a photographer, is, is that freedom to, to, to come up with something that wasn't really planned on, and usually is uh, those things that weren't planned on that come out of a shoot is, is nine times out of ten what's used. Sizzling Summer Fashions is the subject of this outdoor black and white shoot entitled California Fever. Through the use of extreme lenses and proper metering techniques, Collins is able to achieve eye-catching images that reveal the fine detail of the clothing under the harsh light of a beach environment. This particular shot was done for a local boutique that was going to show their stuff in a certain magazine in town, Choice Magazine. Uh, we, we work with variations of themes, one's uh, on a boardwalk, mostly for the, the men's uh, um, bathing suits. They identify the men looking at women on the boardwalk as they normally do to create that feeling, that depth. A lot of lenses were used, uh, extreme lenses though, 40 millimeters to 500s were the, where's the steps that we, we've taken is to create a little bit of a different uh, look. Working in direct sunlight as we were to create a kind of a natural lighting effect to, to fit that environment. We. Um, we had to do something that produced a different look than that people normally see. So going to the extreme lenses like 500s or 40s offered a very unusual uh, uh, effect. So when people look in the magazine, they go, God, I've never seen that before. Illumination looks the same, but it has a different effect to it. And then down here on the beach, uh, offered a little bit better situation for the girls' uh, bathing suits uh, on the sands. And then uh, working with variations of the light here created the mood and the feeling of, of a late afternoon sunset, 
catching a little bit of the last sets of rays. Uh, just uh, the two, two locations offered us two different themes to work with. Arriving right at the beach little location little on a spring, spring morning, morning Collins and Choice Magazine art director Vince Torano go over a series of magazine tear sheets that represent the theme of images that the magazine is looking for. These are real fun and really, this is about San Diego. Yeah, these are taking a lot. Yeah, if you just pick up, pick up some themes on the boardwalk here to show you where they are. The Fine Light crew begins unloading the necessary gear for the shoot. Their first task will be setting up a changing room for the models. For this, a series of light form P22 panels, which are normally used for light control, will be assembled against a wall a short distance from the busy boardwalk. Light stands are secured to the panels with EC1 clamps, creating an anchor to keep the panels near the wall. A diagram reveals the simple construction of this portable and lightweight changing room. Collins will use medium format cameras throughout the day, so the crew loads a series of 120 magazine bags for use with the Hasselblad 500ELX and 500CM. Each film back is clearly marked for easy identification of film type. A 500 mm lens is mounted on the tripod. Extreme care will be taken to keep all equipment clear of sand and moisture during the shoot. The 500 ELX is added for use with the long lenses. The redesigned Hasselblad ELX does not vignette the image in the viewfinder because of a new, larger mirror. With the arrival of the models and the clothing, a clothes hanging rod is assembled in the changing room, and the models begin to check their makeup for work in the harsh sunlight. Collins gives the go for the first series of shots, and the models begin working with the stylist to create the casual look of summertime fashions. Dean Collins talks about shooting fashion to match the environment. One thing the first shot did, the boardwalk offered us, was the capability of interaction. People boardwalk talk, they communicate, they laugh, they joke about things. Uh, didn't offer us that on the beach down here. The beach was more of a solitude, one-on-one, -on -one, individual type thing as people normally are down at the beach. But the boardwalk is a group participation place where people meet and, and, and gawk a lot. So uh, with working with communication, different textures of clothes, uh, clothes that would be look, look good in a group, uh, the boardwalk offered that, uh, that theme to it. With the first three models set at the edge of the boardwalk, Collins sets up with the 500 millimeter lens and shoots two check prints on Polaroid 665 black and white positive negative film. Dean checks with Vince Torano to make sure that he likes the perspective of the long lens. The art director is pleased and Collins moves on to put a series of images on film. Dean takes a moment to work with models Jill, Gary, and Leslie on the posing for this series of shots. A diagram of the setup reveals that the models are placed directly across from the large white stucco wall of a storefront, which acts as a large reflector fill for the subject's shadow area. An incident meter reading is taken to expose for the shadow area of the subjects, with the dome of the meter facing the wall. With the models in place, Collins begins shooting the first series of images. To remove any chance of camera movement with the long lens, Dean uses an electronic cable release with the mirror locked up before each exposure. Okay, let's come out just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a touch. Go ahead. Drop that way. Drop that way. Okay. Good. 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 Both of you over the roller coaster. Roller coaster right there. Good. Right there. Okay. Good. 
A quick change to the 40 millimeter wide angle lens provides a unique contrast as Dean works in close for the low angle shots. Note the assistant moving with Dean to act as a gobo, blocking the harsh sunlight that would normally strike the front element of the lens. Look out, look out, look out this way, yeah, just like that, no, 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 no. Okay, you be, yeah, just like that, good, 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 right there, right there, good. Good, 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 right there, super, super. Give me a little bit more front of the body. The makeup artist makes a quick trim of Leslie's hair, and the shooting continues. Dean switches back to the 500 millimeter lens for a quick series of shots before moving the camera position for the next setup. Bring the hand up there, just one hand up there. Bring your one hand up there, good. Kick it right here, eyes right here for me now. Right there, right here, right here, right here, good, good, good. Roll it just a little bit over, over, oh, whoa, that's good, that's Dean good, that's explains good. the use that's of good. extreme good. lenses good. for outdoor fashion. We're working with the extreme in lenses, 500 millimeters, 350s all the way back to uh, 40 millimeters on the Hasselblad, six by six format which gave us two extreme looks, uh, wide angles to show design, texture, and then the, the compression factor of a 500. Both are to create an effect that is very unusual to the human eye. The lighting, we wanted it to be natural. We wanted it to have that, that feeling that you are really there, that the contrast light there. And the, the lighting situation was easy, especially with direct sunlight, because of the reflectance ambience of the sand and the white walls around us. So not a lot of reflectors had to be used. When they did uh, needed to be used, then we brought them in. But the... Um, <clears throat> The extreme lenses were, were probably the more unique factor of this entire shot to give us something that had an unusual look instead of working with a normal lens. That's good, that's good, that's good. Now Still that using the 500 millimeter lens, Collins moves yeah. to the edge of the seawall for a series of shots with Jill. Like good, right the subject there. is completely backlit more, with ambient bounce the fill from yeah. the high key open surroundings. Right there, good, 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 good. Bring the hand up just a little bit. Moving on to a new set of fashions and models, Collins works with Mike, Gary, and Alan to produce a casual boardwalk look for the new bathing suit fashions. You got a nice bunch. You got a nice bunch. That's an eye. I like that. Yeah, I like the configuration. With the models in place, Dean checks the graphic look of the shot with the art director, and the final touches of makeup are added. As Collins works for a series of shots with the 500 millimeter, we can see that the models are still backlit with the white stucco wall providing reflector fill. Collins moves his camera position for a quick series of shots with Mike in a white summer jacket. Realizing the white jacket requires shadow detail, Dean faces Mike into the hard sunlight. A diagram shows the direct sunlight illuminating the front of the subject. Exposing for the diffused highlight or true tonality of the subject, Collins makes an incident meter reading with the dome of the meter facing the sun. Reflector fill from the wall provides detail to the shadow area. As the morning progresses, the effects of a busy shooting schedule begin to take a toll on the portable dressing room. Yeah. Set up for a series of backlit images on the boardwalk, Collins shoots with the 500 millimeter lens, okay, utilizing a light form P22 with white reflective fabric yeah, yeah. to provide right, reflector fine. fill for models okay, Kelly, right good, Chris, good, and good, Rochelle. Good, good, right there, good. Okay, point, I want you, point, just right there, just right there, right, 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 good, 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 right there. Both of you all looking out there, looking out there, yeah, 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 right there. Okay, let's go. The beach and the boardwalk provide a multitude of settings for fashion photography. Collins will move down to the sand for the final series of images at this location. The P-22 reflector panel is used as a main light source as Dean exposes for the shadow area of the backlit subjects. The sand provides efficient ambient fill for models Chris and Kelly.
With the shooting complete at the boardwalk, Collins and his crew moved to the second and final location of the day. With the late afternoon sun, the California coastline will provide the backdrop for the remainder of the summer fashions, and Collins will use two classic sports cars as props for the photographs. For the first series of images, Collins will use the 40 millimeter wide angle lens at a low angle with a white reflector panel for fill and a small black panel as a gobo. Dean takes a Polaroid check print to ensure proper exposure on the backlit subjects. Collins checks the perspective of the wide angle lens with art director Vince Torano and then shows the print to the models to help them in their posing for the shot. A diagram shows the direct sunlight backlighting the subjects with the P22 white reflective panel providing fill to the shadow area and the small P15 panel held over the camera to protect the lens from the harsh light. An incident meter reading is taken with the dome of the meter facing the reflector panel. With models Lynette and Jill in place, Collins puts the first series of images on film as a crowd begins to gather around the set. Just like that, pull it out just a little mark right there. Good, 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 good. Point to something, point to something. Either one of you right there, good, good, right there. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, good, good. Like Dean that. comments good, good, on the problems good, right there, of crowd control. Good, good, right there. Okay, as long as you're going to be working in lo on location, especially around the beach, you're going to have to accept crowds. I mean, it is their beach. They're going to come around and see what's going on. And today was something very unusual. A lot of reflectors, cameras, uh, a lot of pretty girls. They're going to gather. So you got to kind of leave them alone. And for that, they'll leave you alone. Only you have to be careful. Careful as occasionally you'll get one that'll. Uh, be a smart, smart guy. He'll start yelling, trying to get the girl's attention, whatever. At that time, we're going to have to kind of shut him down tactfully without, without getting the scene going. One thing we did here is we had the capability of putting a lot of, uh, a lot of reflectors up to where he almost had to hide the shot. Working with the wide angles in real close and the telephotos back way up, shooting it with a very narrow scope, we could work with a multiple set of panels, block most of the scene off from the people, and eventually they dissipated. But uh, probably the cleverest part about that is they gave a real nice illumination quality to the highly polished cars. Those reflectors almost lit the cars for us and lit the people with that backlight quality. A series of P22 panels with white reflective fabric and one P42 frame left open create a bank of reflectors that isolate the model from the crowd. The diagram shows the large P42 frame left open for Collins to shoot through. Incident meter readings are continually taken to ensure proper exposure values as Dean uses a 350 millimeter lens to capture a series of models and outfits on film. That's it guys, that's it, right there, right there, right there, right there. Let's bring your face this way, this way, drop it down. Okay, let's, that's it, stretch, stretch, uh, let's bring your face across. Oh yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, stretch it tall. Shoulders this way, shoulders, boom, boom. Bring it back the other way, other way, other way, yep, 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 yep. Bring the face out that way, right there, good, good, good. Five, six, five. Good, 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 right there, uh-huh. Uh-huh, Kelly, shoulders a little bit more that way. Yeah, yeah, uh, head a little higher, high, 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 high. yeah, there you go, right there, excellent, excellent. Okay, drop the hand back to the back of the car, on the, on the car. Then another hand, there, yeah, 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 right there. Good, 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 shoulders into me. Go ahead, go ahead and scoot yourself nice, comfortable, just like you. Uh, scoot just a little bit out. Just a For the bit. final setup around the cars, Collins works with the art director yeah. to find the proper camera angle. The makeup artist makes a final check, and Dean begins shooting from a low angle with the telephoto lens. Good, good, good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Right there, good, good. Over that way. Look Notice that how way, Collins that keeps verbal good, contact good, with good. the models to help good, them concentrate good, good. on their posing. Yeah, yeah, now. Okay. Michelle, kick more, more hip, more hip, right there. Good, good, Dean good, good, talks good, about good, metering good, good. for outdoor fashion. One thing about the metering in this situation is you can take incident readings, both highlight your shadows, it's going to tell you the contrast range. Since the face, since the subject, both the person's face and the clothes, the tonality was even all the way across. You can't take a highlight to shadow reading with just an incident dome, and it's going to tell you is it going to be a, a one to four, a one to six, or one to three. If your contrast gets a little too far out of hand, like one sixth, you're going to want to do some reflective fill to create the contrast, a little bit more range. You can see detail in all parts. But working with black and white film, we have latitudes of, 
overexposing and underdeveloping to flatten out contrast. We also have the ability to finally, finally work with multiple grade printing papers or grade filters on RC papers to create the contrast range we want. Black and white gives you so much more flexibility of contrast control, not only in lighting, but in also in darkroom printing techniques. For the final images of the day, Collins leads his crew down to the water's edge. With the sun low on the horizon, Dean uses the 40 millimeter wide angle lens and faces Lynette directly into the sun to create a series of striking low angle photographs. Right there, good, good, good. Now, okay, roll it, roll ahead. You got it. Turn your face that way. Just right there. It's good. Good, 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 good. Good. Okay, hold it right there. Okay, good, good. Why don't they make 4,000 foot rollbacks, huh? That's it, there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh-huh. Very good, 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 good. That's it, eyes over my head, over my head. Over my head, right there. Shoulders a little bit more this way. Right there, good, 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 right there, okay. Collins moves Lynette to a rock jetty with assistant Dave Lovall holding a light form P22 panel with a single layer of translucent ripstop nylon. An incident meter reading is taken with the dome of the meter facing the diffusion panel. Using the 500 millimeter lens, Collins takes a test exposure to check the look of the shot with the art director. The shot is approved and Dean begins to make the final exposures. The diffusion panel softens the light quality on Lynette while also lowering the subject value. By adjusting the camera for the light loss, the background is shifted to a higher key. Dean Collins adds some closing comments. One thing not to confuse us with is, uh, is, is portraiture. This is not really for flattery of people, it's more for detail of clothes, creating the mood and the theme of where these clothes belong and then giving illumination quality and form and texture to light clothes and dark clothes to make sure you understand everything about the clothes and their form and the fitting. But the one thing there is the same between portraiture and this is the communication with the people. Especially when you're on location at a beach, you get a lot of gawkers, one, one to 100 people staring at this model. And if the model doesn't have a lot of experience, that's where the photographer really has to take over and really commu communicate in such a way that the, the model forgets that everybody's there and it's just you and the, and the, photo the model and the photographer. Uh, it's just keeping them up. One reason I lost my voice today is I was working with long lenses on a high ambient area, a beach with a lot of waves crashing around, but yet that constant communication and screaming and excitement and letting them know they're doing a great job was important to, to get that whole mood and a variation of look to the art director finally had the capability of looking at a whole theme to, to where they're happy with the final job because that's going to be the final critic is the man that, uh, or the woman that hired you to do the job. Whenever producing catalogs for shopping malls, very seldom do you have a particular theme to work with because the malls often aren't really unique in their own design. But Han, which is the builder of malls, designed a very specific set of malls, one being this Horton Plaza, which we're working on. When we were given this, uh, the bid and the go-ahead to do this job, they asked that we incorporate the uniqueness of the lightness, the very pastel airiness of this particular mall. So to manipulate the light within the subject, the frame of the area to control both the background brightnesses and the, the basic theme and lighting of the people was a very essential part to, to be a very successful project. The location shooting begins at Horton Plaza as technical assistant Ryan Hastings begins unloading the lightwear travel cases. These cases are compartmentalized for ease of use 
and extremely durable in their design. The quick mount system for a Bogan 3047 tripod head is attached directly to the 300 mm 2.8 Nikon lens. The 3050 tripod offers Collins great stability and ease of movement. Ryan loads Ektachrome EPN100 transparency film for today's shoot. The daylight film is very neutral and renders soft pastel colors and fabrics with accuracy. When walking around Horton uh, Plaza, you often note the, the pastel, the very light and airy feeling. Well, this is something the client really wanted to get across. So when lighting the subjects, we knew we had to carry this particular theme. So hard light was completely out of the question in this situation. We had to lighten the background whenever possible to keep that pastel feeling. This is where translucent panels often help whenever the art director asks for a much lighter background that, that she was seeing through the camera. So by dropping the uh, panel, the translucent panel between the direct sun and the subject, we've lowered the subject's brightness, created a much more wraparound, softer quality light, more of a portrait style. But then by readjusting our exposure for a proper exposure on the subject, we've then raised the background to have that very light pastel feeling. This pastel looking bright image was taken while the sun was very high in the sky. By totally controlling the sunlight, the subject can be photographed with pleasing light that is low in specularity and the background can be raised at the same time. With Anna on set, Dean and Ryan bring in two Bogan light stands supporting a translucent P15 light form. EC1 clamps connect the panel to the stands. Dean then asks for an incident meter reading. The Gossen Ultra Pro is aimed directly at the translucent fabric, which is now the actual source of illumination. The direction of light is traced as the sunlight strikes and travels through the 42 by 42 inch translucent light form, creating a low specular light quality. As the sunlight is dispersed through the fabric and the lens is adjusted for the light loss, notice the key shifting effect as the background brightness increases. The subject's diffused highlight remains consistent in its exposure and specularity is diminished. A second P15 light form is added, but this time covered with white reflective fabric for a base fill quality. Dean adjusts the reflector for the desired amount of fill or ratio between the diffused highlight and the shadow. Collins re-establishes the exposure with a new incident meter reading. Again, the direct non-diffuse sunlight is shown as it strikes the lower reflective light form and is redirected upwards to fill in the shadow areas. The result is an image with the desired balance between the highlight and shadow. The non-directional light from below creates an even fill-like quality, which is considerably less specular than using a silver reflector. For accent or separation, an acrylic mirror is used to redirect sunlight to the yeah, back and side of Anna's down. dark hair. Good, 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 good. Lower the down. A closer look at the acrylic mirror shows a product which is extremely versatile. A light form EC1 clamp, which connects the mirror to a light stand, allows the mirror to be adjusted for any angle or direction. This design is much less expensive than glass and much less fragile. The direction of light is followed as it strikes the acrylic mirror and is redirected to the subject's hair with full intensity. A close-up shows the result of the direct sunlight after it is sent back to the subject's hair. The separation adds depth and form to the photograph and is very easy to control. A Roscoe amber gel is taped to the surface of the mirror to create a warm late afternoon feeling to the photograph. With the warmth of the gel, the subject appears to be backlit by late afternoon sunlight, although this photograph was taken shortly after 1 p.m. Placement of the highlight is totally controllable, as is the intensity of light. Ten and a half, break it away. All right there, good, 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 good. To reduce the intensity of color by one half, the gel can be placed between the mirror and the subject without being placed between the mirror and the sun. The density of a gel is doubled when the gel is taped to the surface, 
Light must go through the gel, strike the mirror, and return through the gel again. By simply allowing light to go through the gel one time, the intensity is no longer doubled. The panel support clamps can be seen as Dean shoots the final film and works with Anna for a variety of expressions. Controlling background brightness, again, was a very key component of this entire catalog for the art director because the environment and the, the need to see the environment. So often the art director would ask not only to lighten the background, but also could you darken the background a little bit down. This is done by then additive control to the subject, by reflecting light onto the subject. Now working with a white reflector was the essential part here because that still gave us a soft wraparound quality light, low specularity, but then by adding light to the subject's diffuse highlight and then readjusting for the increasement on the subject, the background then became darker. Reflected light gives a different quality to the face than translucent, and it's an additive control, thereby lowering the background brightness as opposed to raising it as in the previous image. With the sun directly behind Anna, Ryan carries a 42 by 78 inch P22 light form covered with a white reflective fabric. He then angles the panel for the desired light quality on her face. Because the sun is behind Anna, it is directly striking the camera's lens. The mirror from the previous shot acts as a gobo to protect the lens from any flare. Collins begins shooting various poses and expressions then makes a few minor adjustments on the panel. The sun's direction can be seen as it is reflected into the model, creating an even light quality, again due to the effective size of the light source. As the results are shown, the background can be seen key shifting down when the camera's lens is adjusted for the increase in exposure. Keep in mind the importance of a gobo for your camera's lens due to the sun's location relative to the camera's position. When producing a catalog in color, it's a fairly simple system of keeping a very close line on your budget. Uh, very, very important in this case because you're producing a large number of photographs for a certain price. But stepping into black and white photography catalog, you've really got to come up with a standardization system to where a single printing time in your dark room, which is based on a standardization theory of exposure and development, will basically affect your bottom line so you're not really eating up all your cost factors in labor. Direct sunlight from behind the model illuminates a white reflective P15 panel, which creates a low specular, even light source. The sun's direction adds the backlighting on the subject's shoulders and hair. Again, sunlight creates the backlighting effect and is reflected back into the faces of the models. The reflective source in this image is a 78 by 78 inch light form P42. Another example of direct sunlight from behind, this image uses a little more sun direction for accenting the model's cheek line. The P22 reflective panel establishes the subject's diffused highlight. A translucent panel is placed between the sunlight and the subject to lower specularity while lowering the subject's diffused highlight. The background value is increased when the camera's lens is adjusted for the loss of light intensity on the subject. A mirror provides the separation, which appears as sunlight in the hair. Another example of translucent lighting techniques is shown in this image of unusual and exotic clothing. The translucent P22 lowers specularity and raises background brightness, while the acrylic mirror separates the hair, giving the appearance of natural sunlight. The uniqueness of this particular catalog is that the art director had a particular theme, background brightness, and light quality they're asking for to match the basic environment of this particular mall. 
That isn't the case in all catalogs. Some catalogs will call for a very hard light, very warm light, very contrasty light. But this particular catalog had a certain theme they wanted to match. The most important thing to note is that we have to have such control of our light qualities to where when the art director asks for a particular theme that we can create a light roundness, shape, contrast, quality, and background brightness to match the theme that they're requesting. I'll start out up here. Uh, you, you, you recorded it? Did anyone ever hear the line? We represent the lollipop land. <laughs> no, not on me, it's not. It has been difficult in the past for us to obtain and maintain credibility. 